All right, so this is some gameplays of my Crackle with Fury deck or Big Boy Fling deck. So, and as you see, after playing this a little bit more, I started seeing certain synergies with certain cards that I didn't see before. One, I was curious about the Ashia and Scoot Swarm synergy, wondering if that worked the way I thought it did, and it did. It does work that way, which is badass. Um, another funny thing is that recently, today, I've realized um, that Ashia helps with the crack with power strategy because it literally, it literally turns itself, right, and your other creatures you have that are not tokens, that's important, um, into mana sources. So that's really awesome. Because the goal for Cracker with Power is to have eight mana so you can do 10 damage up to two targets, which typically tend to my opponent tend to a creature. Which makes really good removal if you gotta take down something that has, that has a really high toughness, as well as just, you know, dealing your opponent 10 damage for game, usually, or at least to uh, get them down. Because if you could play two Cracker with Power back to back, at 10 damage, you know, 8 mana, deal 10, 8 mana, deal 10, the following turn, you know, back to back, that's 20 damage. So right now, if you look on the board, I have 4 lands plus my treasures, that's 5 mana sources. I have 2 creatures, so once I get my Ashia, right now I can play it, clearly, so. Uh, I guess I go this route, even though Right now would have been also the best time to play Asha. That's what I should have done. Seeing this second hand, I should have done that. Now my goal, of course, typically since I crack with power, I use the curse to weaken my opponent, to cut my opponent's that life down little by little and try to get them down to uh, 10. So when it's building up a board, I got a lot of scoot swarms. I think this turn is where I go for the Ashia, but I actually should have done it last turn. No, I go for another Scoot Swarm. So I'm getting some life. I'm trying to set up Scoot Swarms to... I guess I'm trying to make it bigger, as they say, to try to get... Um, yeah, if I did the Ashia, I would have a much better uh, advantage. Because I would have triggered the first Scoot Swarm, and I would have you know, any extra spoofs that I play would give me more. So, like, right now, I would be generating a lot of advantage if I played the Ashia uh, last turn. I'm trying to save my mana, but, like I said, this is before my realization that, oh, shit, I forget that I turned my creatures, my non-token creatures, into mana sources, which actually helps with Crackle. So, me saving, trying to save my token, my treasure token for Crackle, is pointless. It's counterintuitive, right? It's like, I should be getting my Ashia out there. As quickly as possible. Like I should play it right now. <laughs> I doubt I'd do it this turn. Shit, I wouldn't be surprised I end up board wiping and just go straight with burn down house. No, I go ask you. Smart move. This is like what three turns overdue. So I gain some life, you know, I'm getting, you know, my scoot swords um active. I got the tokens generated, which is awesome, because here's the other thing, right? Remember, in order to get a token from Scoot Swarm, you got to have a, a six lands. The thing is, Asha turns them into to lands. So look what I'm doing right now. I was like, this is ridiculous. Synergy there. Now, these cards are in the deck for different reasons. As Scoot Swarm was added, um, you know, way, way late after testing the deck out. Um, now it's definitely part of the deck because it has synergy with Asha. Yasha is just here for its power, its ability to get strong for the lands so I can fling it. That's all it's really in there for. Now it has synergy with Crackle and with Scoot Swarm. So all that good synergy there. So it's just, just by happens chance, as they say, all this worked out. It does suck that I still don't have uh, any protection against. There's two of the weakness in the deck, obviously. Um, one is um, flyers. <laughs> um, anything that, you know, flyers, 
is a problem. Because um, the only defense we have against virus is, is the tree folk token. Um, of course, a kill spell. You know, we do got kill spells in here. Um, obviously, with the four toughness, and I have clearly, that's the funny thing is I have so much mana here. Like, if I pay attention right now, I can not only get rid of his flyer, I could also deal him 10 damage and then go for game. But look at me. What am I doing? I'm just going here, just making things stronger for no reason. I could have crackled with power right now, but I'm not, you know, I'm not paying attention because this is before I realized that I, that I, that the, my non tokens, um, creatures are mana sources for crackle. So, of course, you know, after knowing that, you know, knowing is half the battle, you, you make better decisions later on. Ironically, I use my my creature as a mana source to uh, foretold my uh, poison the cup, so I could use it uh, later to kill his uh, flyer. But it's like, but I could have killed him with crackle. Not only deal, kill him with crackle, I will also deal him damage. Not only would I deal him damage, I could have gone for game. I had game right there, but I didn't didn't do that because I didn't think of using these cards in that manner. But lesson learned. That's why you. That's why you play the game, right? That's why you play test. So you learn. Now my point is, look at that, my point is at six. Point is, I could just attack with what I already had, got them down to six. Look, even my curse is dealing the one damage, getting down to five, which means I could have paid five for Crackle and dealt him, dealt my point five. If I was paying attention to what I had, I saw that I had game already. Twice over. Don't get me wrong, I'm still winning. The point is, is that if you have game, you know, one or two turns earlier, or you had a better line of play, you know, two, three turns earlier, you know, should play optimally, right? Always play your best strategy. Now I know, I know it's half the battle. This is pretty badass. I wonder if other people use Asha with uh, Scoose form. They probably do. Probably been figured out that that synergy. And GG. Because <laughs> I always have the bench. But I definitely was going to crackle that turn. I just said, obviously, I've been could have crackled. I know it's my point of gain life, but that was a thing. Not an important thing, but it was a thing nonetheless. So, the next gameplay. So, it was just funny. And that's the importance of like uh, recording your matches and stuff like that. Some more gameplay. Do I move again to hand? Yeah, the move again to hand. The hand didn't look that good. This hand is a little bit better. Technically, it's a two lane hand because of Kazo's Fury. Technically, the deck has 20 lands. You got 16 actual lands, and then comes off Fury. So, technically, 20 land deck. So, try to be careful. A mulligan. So, I use Kazo Fury for mana use. Turn 3, I have 3 mana. That card's toughness is pretty high. Let's see, do play mana source. Play that and if get them weaker. Okay, so I do set up my first the weekend poison the cup. I use this to kill his uh, mage. Because he was surprised that it was there. He wouldn't have attacked with that if he knew that would have. So I gain life and it's the creature. It's two treasure tokens, so he has the ability to level that up. School sworn, I got Asha combo. I have the ability to minus 
four to everything on the field. So I think what I do first is I attack before I do that minor play. So I can use the two crush the weeks. So then he blocks it, takes the hit. So he takes the hit, which is good for me. Because it goes to get him to 10, so crack can take it out. So I play that instead. Hmm. Oh, I guess I don't want to lose my creature. Uh, definitely need mana. I think I leave. I leave it this way. So I'm like, I want the mana, and then I want the school storm. No, I get rid of school storm. All right. I guess one is enough. <laughs> I guess that's the decision I made. But definitely need a land. Uh, or toad that. So I'm saving that up. I think that's what is. Yeah. Good idea to save it <laughs> when your opponent drops a five five right afterwards. Definitely don't want to lose my 4-4 four four that I can take advantage of. So I think what happens is that I attack, he blocks, which puts him in, puts him in uh, double crush the weak. So, see, right now I could do the school, school, school thing, but that would uh, probably counterintuitive. I guess that would have me use up my Land, so it's like, oh wait, right now I need to clear that threat because he only has two cards in his hand. So one of those cards could be a land, and another card could be a creature. So better off trying. To... Oh, okay, so I go for run seven and put up a wall instead. I guess I'm waiting for him to play more creatures. I do have 26 life, so I could I could take a couple hits. So so he plays that. So that's good. That's something I want to get rid of. So, want want to clear that that's a goal. Feels like I get I think I like them both out. So I have a five five. So I have a way to. So all see all his stuff is fire. The only defense I have is the the token. So I did put up that defense. Granted, I could have cleared his board. But in the process, I would have been open for um, something happen. Oh yeah, I block with a token, so and then I'm getting my mana, which was important. Like this wasn't a bad play. I played this hand better than the whole try to wipe the board earlier. It's now I can, I can try to take advantage of the situation. Because next turn I can make another token, so go in there for the for the life gain when it is in is at a disadvantage. So to take advantage of that. So boom, play the other one. Okay, the board. We got the all the use I needed from the curse of leeches. So now my opponent. Uh, I could play scoots right here, obviously. Which I do try to set up for next turn because next turn's the scoots with uh, the Asha play is to you know, build up my board. Plus, I'll be able to make the token. This w was a bit of a problem. I'm like, oh man, and it gets haste because if I'm right, the enchantment's gonna give it haste or something. Um, so it's that, and it's like, oh, man. I'm not gonna be able to get my token because it's not going to survive. Um, I I'll survive, so I don't care if he deals me damage. It's like, oh man. Delina doing her thing. Good card. So I just won't do nothing. Just take the hits. He said, oops. I guess he just felt like he misplayed. Alright, so six, play this. So a seven, be sure. So scoots, triggers. Right, and I have, and I have two scoots. So when I play this, I trigger both scoots. So. Getting more scoots. When I play this, more scoots. As you can see, I have seven lands. Um, but 
I tech I technically be oh no, I already used up my land, so it's like I had to play this. So now I have more than enough to play my uh, crackle of power next turn. Um, that's probably what I do. Because I have seven lands and I have the treasure token, so that's eight, and that's all I need for my crackle with power to deal my opponent ten damage. So he's, he does this, and it's like, oh man, this is going to be a problem if he can get enough. Because I, I can't block those flyers, so it's like this is a good uh, strategy right here. And I guess this is the deck's main win con because it definitely looks like it, it would have worked. Um, if they were all, if they all had eight power, that's eight times twenty-four. Eight times three would have been twenty-four. Of course, I'm block, which was the smart thing to do. If I allow all this to go through, I would have lost. Right? No, I would still have one life left. But the point is, is that you know, maintain that extra, extra three life matters because he could have popped out something. My opponent says a good game because you know the realization that you know next I, I can I can give him seven says whoops but there I go for the crackle of power <laughs> oh yeah I paid one that was that was a misfire you paid two remember to pay two I don't know why I I, I said I, I paid pay one it's supposed to be paid two so that way a total of eight mana to do um to do so now I still had an attack. I mean, he's, you know, I have the advantage, obviously. Um, but it was the fact that it's like, oh man, it was supposed to be, supposed, I was supposed to use eight mana in order to do ten. But still, one death regardless. Still got to crackle. So you see the power of Scoots, you see the power of Ashia, Ashia Scoots. You know, good defensive strategy, but also. Um, Asha with my non token creatures helping uh, produce, you know, at least be able to produce extra mana that can definitely go towards my uh, Crackle of Power. So I could always play Crackle of Power a little bit sooner than later, especially if I have two of them in my hand. Pain one, playing one soon for 10 damage, and then play the second one the following turn for another 10 damage. You know, a great strategy, great synergy there. It's just that I didn't, you know, have that realization at the time when I was playing the, the deck that that's the, the type of synergy these cards had. Because, you know, I have them in the deck for different purposes. The fact that they actually uh, work together for more than one purpose. So, pretty cool synergy. Definitely like uh, how the, de the deck's turning out. <clears throat> it would be so badass if I could give the Scoots um, token or any, all my creatures flying in general. That would be useful. Uh, enchantment destruction would be useful in the deck. So you can always improve upon the deck to uh, you know, make it better, faster, stronger. So as you can see, I was already <laughs> in the midst of a battle with opponent. Sometimes I forget to start recording. And while I'm playing, I realize, oh, wait, I'm not recording, and I start recording. So, <coughs> we have, I already have um, five lands. I have my, my Ashia, Scoots, and my uh, Innkeeper, which is a combo in itself, because now, every time I play a creature, I'll get a lot of life. I'll get a lot of tokens because the creatures will be land, so they'll trigger the scoots. And I already have a scoots token, so I'm gonna get so playing one creature, I'm gonna get two creatures off of it, which means I'm gonna be gaining three life. Um, oh yeah, and then um, yeah, it'd be too powerful if the tokens counted, because then it'd be like an infinite loop. Um, Asha doesn't count. The tokens and turn them into lands because then this will be an infinite loop, but it's still a strong uh, uh, combo nonetheless. But it would be infinite loop if the tokens did become turn into lands because then they'll trigger the scoots 
effect and just keep on going. So, we just make sure that these that these two cards don't don't go too too hard together, but they go hard enough. Yeah, he swoops. Uh, now I remember this match. Just he realized that that was a bad play that I had gave adventures there that I can block. So I'm making sure I have one red, one black, four toes. So I can use four toe. Uh, still need some green mana source. I get I got more red and black, so I can at least start the curse. It's the way for green mana. Opponent is building up. It looks like I finally got green mana. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I uh, uh, scribed, I killed one of his creatures and scribed, so I made sure that I got the mana. So now I can start ramping up. I play all three of these in a turn. I'm trying to be slick. So play this, use the token, drop it, gain a life. Play another one, gain two life. I think he, I think he kills them all with another uh, massacre. Hands looking a little light there. One has four mana. I uh, place that instead. The board wipe, I could wipe the board, but then I have my my. Asha Soul. So let's see. What do I play? Do I play the soul? Yeah, I play the soul. Using the token. Get him up there. Boom, boom, boom. Get three life. Technically, I have four mana. Kills my nine nines. Um, that sucks. Now the funny thing is, if I had fling in my hand, I would be able to fling it. But I didn't have fling. I mean, because all fury. If I had because all fury in my hand, I would have been able to play it. Um, I do have the mana to play uh, Poison the Cup, so I can get rid of that threat. Boom. Of course, um, it creates that's, that scenario right there. My opponent can't block with these, so I'm taking advantage of that. <laughs> so I'm not blocking those attacks. So the goal is to get my opponent down to 10. I got board wiping in my hand, so. And I got the mana for it. I gotta be careful because I lose life from his creatures dying. I make sure I have more green in here so now I can red and seven. So I put up a defense. I'm thinking getting life is always good. What's that favorite? The flowers can always present a problem. One has six mana. So it should be able to do something. Yep, there we go. He plays that. I think he plays it for one, which clears my innkeepers. Doesn't want to go too far because, you know, of course he's getting life, he's getting a token. Plays that, which has haste and death touch. I'm flying, of course. <clears throat> and block that one. If I can kill it. And yes, I lose a life. But it's worth it than taking a lot of damage. Now I can board wipe. Um, I attack first, which is smart, right? Because he can't block this. Um, then board wipe. I mean, technically, it wouldn't matter either way. 
because the only thing that can what happens, I'll lose two life, and then he'll just make a, a metal zombie token. So I do play the board wipe. This is like yeah. I better make sure he has nothing. I deal with this. Yeah, because he has a... Yeah, I forgot. He has two massacres. I hate when they stack the cards on top of each other. Like, And then when I try to uh, click on the lands and stuff like that, I don't know how much land my opponent has. Sometimes they'll have two blues stacked on top of each other, and it looks like just one land. So I'm thinking they can't counter, and then suddenly they can. It's like, oh, how do you counter? Suddenly you had two mana when you only had one. That's bullshit. See, in real life, I could count and I could see the, the number of the cards. Scoots in the land would have been a nice play. For a second, play the Scoots. Try to get, get ready to use it later. Keeping my defenses up because it would be pointless to attack. Not too pointless because uh, I w if he doesn't block, I should have, yeah, that's where I went wrong. I should have attacked. I think I do uh, regret that. I should have, uh, that becomes, that causes me a problem later on. If I think I should have attacked. So I'm going for the token generating. Now I'm attacking, right? Or I just end my turn and use that as defense. This was another bad play. See, I should have board wiped. Because I would have. See, I should be attacked. I should have board wiped and I should have attacked. I'm giving my opponent a, a fighting chance to make a comeback. Because now he's leveling up and doing all this extra stuff. And it's like I have a lot of life. There's no reason for me to be holding back. I, I should be attacked. Like, two attacks will win me the game right now. Like, his tokens can't block, so. There's no reason for me to be holding back this hard. So I foretell that, save that for later. Don't attack. Let's see. I have to choose something, so I bring that back. So now my opponent has all of this, and now I'm down to seven. So now I have the ability to do seven damage to everything on the board because, as you can see, I lost my token somehow. Wait, let me go back so you can see. It's like, how did I lose my token? Let's play a card effect. Okay, so I got my token. It's his turn. He kills it. So he kills it with a kill spell. He should have been putting in work. I should have been swinging with it. Best case scenario, he uh, he doesn't block, and I and I deal him damage, and then I see. I had game. If I wasn't paying attention to what I can do, then of course this so that's how I lose that. Lose the token. Coming at me for seven. <coughs> then he's doing that, making tokens. Now I have the ability to do five to everything. If I do this instead, I can still do five. It's the fact that I can do seven. I should have just done five. Just done five and just clear the board. Oh no, that's what it was. It's because I wanted to not lose any life from his effect. So this was a two card combo to just warp everything, you know, exile everything. So that way he gets no token. I don't lose no life. He don't gain no life. <sighs> so that's the idea. That's why I played it in that order. And I play this. I still lose this battle. It's just this. Uh, but yeah, because he kills my creature, that gives him a, that makes him, like, yeah, he beats me, this little strategy, 
he does all that, all that triggers off, takes me down to him. So you got that. As you can see, I had game, I just messed up. It happens. I lesson learned. Now I, now I see what I could have done. So I'll keep that in mind next time. You know, because some cards you you play them for a reason, but then later on you realize, oh, there's they're in combinations with another card. You you get something else out of it. You know, you don't. Sometimes you don't you don't see the synergy with certain cards right off the bat. Um, that's where you know play you know play play testing stuff like that comes in, into play and matters because of the fact that you start realizing that oh okay this works for this and this works for that and these cards in combination gets you these results. So start off with the Kazo mana, make sure I get green out there, so I got green, got some black, more red out there, so I got double red, one green, one black. I got the plunder out there, you know, uh, going, one, going one for one with my mana. Uh, I have a lot of red, so I go for black. Mana, just make sure I have two black, two reds, and I got one green, so I need one more green source. I do have a green source from this, so I go for that play. To get him out there, get the token out first, always get the token out, and then later on get the, uh, you know, start getting the, the lands through the plus one effect. This will make his angels cheaper. I think I lose this battle. I get my lands. I should play scoots first. Yep, which I do. Then play the land so I can get the token. I'm playing the land. So I got that. Further increase my defense. Uh, then give my attack. Yep. So it's a deal of five because more likely he's not going to block. Definitely wants to keep this here on the field because it makes all his angels. Cost two less, so this costs one to play. The next one will cost one to play if I'm like two to play. No, nope. the next see for three. The next one costs three to play. I'm like, look at that power. Just all because of this one card. Because I didn't even get all that on the field. So he gave that the ability to attack twice. I scoots and I get a scoots token, which is awesome. <laughs> 